will start by asking you all one question. How many of you wake up on Monday morning and say, thank God it's Monday? How many of you say, thank God it's Friday? So maybe you see your hand. How many of you like, Monday morning, yes, it's Monday morning. I want to work. <laughs> I don't see any. But I'm going to tell you the reality. Unless you come from a millionaire family, you're going to work for 10, 20, 30 years. So unless you find a way to, to get it around of it, 99% of people, unless you choose not to work, you will be going on the job market and you'll be working for many years. So I think one of the very important things is to choose a job, or maybe perhaps I'll call it a career, that you're really passionate about. Because or else, every single Monday morning, or worst case is every single Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or if you want Saturday, Sunday, every day you will drag yourself out of bed. And to me, that is the most important thing that you want to choose where you work at. You must look forward to get to work. Uh, instead of like, you, you are always like, I hate going to work. When you hate going to work, why are you working? Why you need to get yourself into it? Out there, how many companies are there in Malaysia? If you say you just limit yourself to Malaysia, there are hundreds of thousands of companies. How many companies do you need to choose to work at? One at a time, right? And often when I say my interactions with fresh graduates, young people, one of the things that I find that the young people tend to ignore is, let's not, is look, a lot of young people look at today's income or today's job potential. What I want to take you out of your zoom out is when you choose your first job or choose the next job, think of your lifetime value of that job. I think one of the things is to look at is choose a job not because this job paying you 200 ringgit extra this time. Choose the job not because this job will give you a bit more flexible time so that you get one more hour to sleep this time. But choose a job that you think that over your lifespan, since you guys are all very young, or maybe all of us are very young, and you have a lot of chance to, to plan it. So what is a job that you, plan, you think that will bring you to where you want to get to 10 years, 20 years, 30 years later? I came from Penang State, mainland side, and after my high school, I went to Singapore to do my ASEAN scholarship for a short while, and then I came back under JPA to, at UITM for a preparatory program. And then like, I was lucky to get a chance to went to the States. I went to Cornell University. So I, maybe let me tell you a little bit at that juncture. So it's like, here I am, I just got a place to get, uh, into the universities, and I was about to get on my first time taking an aeroplane. So it was my first time excitedly taking a plane and once I get to the campus, on my day two of the campus, they gave us an English exam, English test, so that there are 3,000 new students who has better English or whose English is not ready for it. So happily I took the exam, I thought that okay, like, I get into university, I should be fine. I come from Malaysia, Malaysia Boleh, no problem. <laughs> so at the end of the test, the next day, the results came out, oh, 3,000 new students, eight students were chosen as the best, the ballet from behind. <laughs> and there are people from China, there are people from Japan, there are people from Korea, Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia. <laughs> so I represented Malaysia. So that's how I started my campus life. Went to the university, being selected as the eight people with the best English from the worst. So it's the worst English of the campus. And it was interesting, it was exciting, but also pretty daunting. What am I getting myself into? I got a place where I hardly can understand English. So back then in high school, not sure whether you came from that background where speaking English is something where people say you are showing off. And I think one of the things that reason I share this thing is, no matter what it is, is don't give up. I mean, back then, it, at that juncture, I could actually give up completely. And I'm quite sure all of you here would have gone through something similar, maybe different experience, different situations. But you might, there may be time you ask yourself, why are you getting yourself into it? So when you apply for jobs, the same thing. You might be like asking yourself, why am I writing, uh, editing my resume 20 times? Why am I attending interviews over interviews over interviews over interviews? And answer all those irrelevant questions that you think, why the hell they're asking these questions? <laughs> but I think a lot of it is perseverance. If that's what you want, go for it, try your best, and keep on getting feedback. Keep on trying. Worst case is what? A rejection from a job. You can, there are a few hundred thousand companies in Malaysia. Worst case, you get a few hundred thousand pieces of rejection letter. So just now I gave you the first test of the test of whether you thank God it's Monday. Another test I'm going to ask you to think about will be how many of you try to reflect in your life where late at night, let's say midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 
when no one forced you to do something, but you enjoy and you choose to do that thing. Is there something like that? Yeah, so like, let's say whether homework, whether some works or something where... Work, maybe? <laughs> like, maybe I'm questioning some of these people here, huh? <laughs> like that, who at 3 in the morning, no one will force them, their, their supervisor will ask them to go to sleep, and everyone asks them to sleep, but they still love what they're doing, and they will still stay back and doing it. So I'm quite sure there are people who are doing that as well. So the question is, choose something that even at late nights, when you're very tired, you don't mind doing it. It's just like a quotation I learned from uh, Walt Disney. You guys heard of Walt Disney, right? So in Walt Disney, what their mission is, is whenever people go into Walt Disney in the morning, when you leave Disney World or Disneyland at night, when you're super tired, you walk out with a bigger smile than you walk in. So when you're doing late nights, are you having more smiles with yourself than when you woke up in the morning, when you're middle day and you're having your lunch, or you feel like so frustrated, oh, why am I, what, why am I doing this every day? So choose something. You have a choice. Choose something, what you want to do. I know that what you study, a lot of times your parents may ask you, that, okay, you must you study engineering, you must work in engineering. But I think that today, a lot of examples out there where people may not be directly working in the field. And some question may ask, uh, since I'm not working in the field I'm studying, am I wasting all my three years, four years in universities? And I would like to say that uh, in university life, what you really gain is not just a textbook knowledge. If you want a textbook knowledge, today just go to book fair or online internet. Today you can get everything you want. And today if you want to learn firsthand from people speaking, just go to YouTube, Udemy, Coursera, all sorts of for, uh, website online. You can learn all those. But I think a lot of it is the soft skills that you pick up, whether uh, at universities, at college, or even at work. Like things like analytical skills, communication skills, and all those things, time management skills, stress management skills. And I think this will stay along with you. And it's not a waste. And let, just now I talk about my journey, like I went to universities, I studied electrical computer engineering. Until now, at least I haven't worked anything about engineering. <laughs> my first job is in consulting. So maybe I'll tell a consulting joke. <laughs> there are a couple of consultants here. So in consulting, we do three things. First thing is we try to convince people. When we can't convince people, we'll confuse people. <laughs> and then when we can't confuse people, we'll con people. <laughs> and then because consulting, right, that behind there's an insult. So con plus insult. But it's purely a joke. And I think one of the things, reason why I ask myself getting into it is like, we only live young once. Just try it. What is the worst case? Fail. What's the worst case? You just can't get the job done. But I think it's like we stretch ourselves, we try our best. And I think in everything we do, it's always asking ourselves, am I giving my very, very best? Am I doing the right, right thing? One of the culture of that, I hope more companies will have it, and I hope all of you will have it, is like, it's not the fear of making mistakes. It's we are afraid that people are not daring enough to make mistakes. So at my work, it, whenever we found that the colleagues are afraid to make mistakes, they get me very worried because that means they are not trying hard enough. They are not stretch, really stretching their brains to do something crazy and unimaginable. So I think it's when you're doing something is take risks. Of course, take calculated risks, but stretch, try. Ask yourself, is this the right thing to do? And I think, when, and I think one of the uh, guiding principles is ethics. And I think a test on ethics is, would you mind what you are doing now? being published in the headline or newspaper tomorrow morning. If you think that you, you can stand tall and be proud of what you are doing, of what you're doing being published in the newspaper tomorrow morning, then you know this is the right thing to do. How many of you know what you are passionate about? Three, four, okay. I think all of us, as we go on to a company or a job, is we all of us playing a role. So example in a company. Like, there are people that who are very external facing. That means, let's say the CEO of company. Often they are very external facing. So there are people that who manage all the stakeholders, the directors, the media, the, the, all the external parties. And there are people that who go in and look at in depth on it. And I think there are people that who were looking at a more strategic direction vision. But at the same time, you need people who go in depth. And I think it's play to your strength. And maybe one other advice I would put to you is, a lot of times, we spend too much time focusing on our weaknesses. We spend too much time trying to improve on what we are weak at. I will actually ask you to spend most of your time 
to look at what you are great at and be world class at it. So if you are great at designing and you are bad in your math, forget about math. <laughs> Spend all the time to think how can you be the best designer in the world. Vice versa. If you are great in people, leading people, managing people, you, you, are, you did horribly in, example, doing business planning, then don't do business planning. You have a choice. Do focus on what you are good at and make it great. Make it the, if there's one person in this world that can do that thing, it's better be you. So focus on your strength and not focus on your weakness. The crucial to me is subjective, right? So let's say social skills. So in not ev maybe if you put a person's life into just purely job, work, career, not every job needs to be socialized. And also put it in the personal life. Not every person enjoy socializing. Maybe some person spend, spend your life enjoying more on reading in a, in a, on a tree, example. So I think in love is like, is this something that you really need to? So example, socializing. Let's say your role is PR. You are taking in charge of PR in your company and you hate socializing. Then something is wrong somewhere there. Whether you have to change yourself or you are in a wrong role. You are not a bad person, but it's just that you are in the wrong role at that time. And I think it's a question to ask yourself, is this something that PR you are passionate about? Let's say example, in that case. That if that is what you're passionate about, then adapt it. And if it's not what you're passionate about, then forget it and change it another place. And the same thing, let's say example, I take another example, like something more core. Example, time management. Let's say you, you are horribly in time management. Not all jobs need a great time management. Let's say you're artist. Do you need a great time management? Maybe not as much. But maybe if your, your work relates to impact all the other people directly, where you, let's say, come to a meeting and you're always late or you run your meeting way over time, then your time management skills become very important. So again, it's relative to that. Uh, one thing that people ask is BATNA. I'm not sure, I think some of you might have heard of this, is which is what is the best alternative? So what is, if you don't do anything, what will you be? If you do something, what is the options that you have? And what is the best case scenario? What is the worst case scenario? And I think when you do something at a short term, medium term or long term, at least one of them need to be better than your best case of not doing anything. So a calculated risk is you knowing what you're getting yourself into. Of course, you might not have 100% planning that it will be exactly like this. But at least you know that, okay, I'm getting myself, so example like, say in my life journey, when I join Groupon, a fast growth company, then I know that maybe what I'm getting risk of is maybe I'll have less sleep. I may not get as much sleep. And that is something that I know that I will not have. Maybe that I, I will need to be super hyperactive because the office is full of all 23, 24 years old running around. So that's another thing that I need to get myself into. But another thing on the pro side that I know that, okay, I can be in an industry where it's high growth, exciting, but at the same time, maybe is high risk. So I think a lot of it is knowing what yourself you are getting into and then you evaluate it, lay it down. Yeah, most people, let's say like go to universities, they only know the world is my friends, my classmate, my roommate, my flatmate, and these are my world. But the world is way beyond that. And for you to go to the company for interview, a lot of times you're going to meet people who are not your age group. People who may be thinking slightly differently from you. So one of the ways to prepare for an interview indirectly is start talking to people who are older. And I think one of the things I hope that you would continue to do is always take initiative. Like I have gone to so many places to speak and I have seen often is like the people that who eventually make it are often that people who take a lot of initiative out there. Whether asking questions, whether after that connecting with all the people involved and be really, really involved in it. Put your 101% into what you are doing and I think things will take care of itself. Oh, 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 oh,